Chapter four, poor preparation prevents progress. Never confuse movement with action. Ernest Hemingway. I always wanted to write a book, but I uh, never believed or imagined that it would be this one. Frankly, I'm grateful as I think that too little is understood about TBIs and the individuals who have them. Over the past five years, I've learned so much about the relationship of our mind to our gut, our, our thoughts and their effect on our progress. It is true, I suppose, that no one can predict when someone's going to get better, but wow, I need to say this again. It is true, I suppose, that no one can predict when someone's going to get better. But wow, don't say that it may never happen. It's like when you hear it, that someone has been given so many months to live where do they sell those crystal balls? I learned a bit and wanted to share what I discovered to be of tremendous help to me. One of the first things I learned was that a defeatist attitude leads down into the cellar of darkness. There, there are no windows. And the only way out is to change your mind and agree to sit on the couch for a few years. I always had to have a reason for everything. I really did, I needed to know the reason for everything. And this was a criticism from a psychiatrist I saw at one time in my life. I was puzzled as to why that was a criticism. And to this day, I still don't know why that would be stated in the tone and the manner it was, but I believe that knowing and understanding the reasons for things often provides possible solutions and also gives us the willingness to try. I can say that I figured out what the reason was for my TBI. It was for me to sit and think until I arrived at a place where I knew what my purpose was here on this fantastic planet and how I was supposed to contribute. It was the line from J. Alfred Prufrock over and over for I've known them all already, then how, known them all, known the mornings, evenings, afternoons, yeah, then how should I begin to spit out all the butt ends of my days and ways, and how should I presume? The reason did not come for many years, yet now here I am writing a book. You see, you can do it too. You can succeed, jump over hurdles that you never did before or imagined possible. I have challenges with organizational things, processing issues, but here I am writing. Remember, you are a competitor and you have recovered from disappointments. You may not be able to return to your job. You may have to adjust to a new way of being in the world. Try to regard this as a valuable opportunity to expand your skills and interests. An athlete becomes accustomed to overriding obstacles. Heck, you thrive on challenges. Please keep in mind that you're not alone. You're in the good company of those who have gone before and conquered their TBI challenges. Don't allow yourself to be measured by others' attitudes and opinions. It's your opinion that counts. You know this. When you were excelling athletically, you knew that if you had done your training and the proper prep work, your mindset was fully armed with an arsenal of choices that you could make while competing. You learned quickly that if you were always looking toward the finish line before getting there, it could be the longest race around the track you ever ran. If you just put your head down and got the job done in that moment, every moment, trying your absolute best every moment, before you knew it, you were at the finish line and you achieved that which you set out to do, which was allow yourself to be your best. I'll let you read that again to yourself, but so important. 
Recovering from your TBI should be approached in a similar manner. Try to focus on where you are, what you're doing. If you're thinking about what happened or what might happen, the negative thoughts, you are not in the moment. I would like you to live in the moment, every moment, every day. That, whether you know it or not, is one of the gifts of your TBI. Yes, I know you're ready to be working hard again physically, but, but as I explain in chapter seven, there are important reasons to check in with a number of things before getting back in the game. Experimenting with new things increases the brain's ability to connect, reconnect synapses. You may find that there are new ways to exercise. You may be experiencing a host of symptoms. Hopefully, they are subsiding as time passes, but if they are not disappearing as fast as you'd like, I want you to remember that patience produces progress faster than anything else in this situation. Remember to keep a list of the symptoms you are experiencing. This is really important. This is not the time to work harder to get better, especially if working harder brings on brain fog, headache, lethargy, and a need for hours and days of sleep. I'm gonna repeat this. This isn't the time to work harder to get better if working harder brings on brain fog, headache, lethargy, and a need for hours and days of sleep. Remember that you need to assume the mindset of a champion warrior whose knowledge consists of being positive and doing the necessary things that are required and only those things that are required. Putting an extra time on the track will, will have negative returns. Overexertion can produce free radical damage and inflammation. It can send you backwards. Listening to your body and doing positive self-talk will result in a much stronger you in more ways than you can ever imagine. I know I figured it out. I had to change the way I thought about my new way of being. And I made a list of short-term goals. Then I made a plan that I could envision supporting that progress. Get yourself some sticky notes and write several positive messages to yourself. Place them where you can't miss them, like the refrigerator door stuck on the mason jar with your green homemade celery juice, the car dashboard or the bathroom mirror. So it is the first thing you see in the morning and the last before bed. Place them on the door that you must look at to open or leave your house. You might change the messages from time to time. One of my favorites is I've got this. Reading these messages throughout the day will help you replace negative self-talk, such as, oh, I'm so stupid, you know, or whatever else you say to yourself. You need to replace those thoughts with positive thoughts. What you think about actually matters. It changes your brain chemistry. It has been shown that when we think positively, it allows our bodies to heal. You may have heard it say that what you think about, you become. So imagine yourself to be something wonderful because you are. Believe in yourself and allow yourself the opportunity to succeed. Try not to listen to well-intentioned yet ill-advised people who may think that they are helping, but try to push you. That type of training is for someone without a brain injury. Patience is the, is the key along with the daily check-in as to where your mind is and your body. Generating your positive thoughts is important. When you feel yourself becoming overwhelmed, stop, close your eyes, take a deep breath and let it out slowly. Then tell yourself, nicely done. Use those sticky notes, paste them everywhere and remember to smile. What are your goals for the day? Do you have appointments? Did you wanna check in with work and see how things are going? What did you accomplish yesterday? Were you able to swim for 15 minutes without stopping and without a headache? Did you have fun writing? Big wins should be celebrated. 
Reward yourself with a dinner out, a visit with a good friend, or a new pair of fun socks. Set daily, weekly, and monthly goals. Pick a reward for the accomplishment of them. For instance, I allowed myself to buy a new hat when I completed a course that I had to work ever so hard at two times. Yep, had to take that course two times. But I did it, and you will too. Remember, laughter is a great healer. NPR has great stories you can listen to on podcasts. There are many different apps that offer pleasant distractions, so take advantage of them. When you feel depressed, find a funny movie or a comedian who cracks you up and stay away from the toxic situations and social media drama. Keep away from those situations and people who do not leave you, leave you feeling like a million bucks. Keep away from them. You now have an opportunity to reflect upon and change your opinion about so much. You can reinvent yourself if need be. Your brain injury is a gift and it opened a door for you to discover that there are many things you may have taken too seriously, which wasted your time and robbed you of your joy. Any situation can be looked upon in many different ways. I encourage you to find the humor in all of it and try smiling at the crankiest people. It's one of my perfect personal favorite games. I like to see how, I really do. I like to see how long it takes me to get someone who's in a particularly bad mood to smile. You've been struck down hard, but you can get up. You will. You absolutely will. I can tell you that the new things that you will realize about yourself in the process will make having your TBI worth it. You just need to change your mindset. Journaling can also be helpful. It's a good way to release stress. It helps you in clarifying your thoughts. You can brain dump your reactions, worries, and goals. It is a reflective and relaxing activity. If you're new to this, you might write about the things that went well that day or write down three things you're grateful for. This may be one word or a sentence or two. It may mention people, incidents, or possessions. Then name something that you accomplished that day and name something you'd like to accomplish in the future. So it will look something like this, your win of the day, your challenges of the day, and a goal or dream for the future. Keep it simple. Keep this journal where you will be sitting to write. Choose the most comfortable place for you. Enjoy your time of reflection. If you already have this habit, I'm envious. Remember, it's important to only do what feels good for you. If your head starts to pound, stop. Put on some comforting music. Do a guided meditation. You're healing your brain. Brain shifts are important. The two words brain and shift have become my new way of referring to my brain injury. Think about it. Injury, traumatic brain injury, concussion, post-traumatic stress disorder. All of these terms associated with a TBI carry such heaviosity as Woody Allen would say. They all sound so serious and they are, they, they really are, but I have found it better to refer to my TBI as a brain shift. Remember, you become what you focus on, so remember to keep your thoughts positive and flowing. If you feel depressed, call someone, move your body, take a walk, dance, listen to music, sing, stretch, talk to your dog, swim, do laundry, bake. These things can help to move your mind out of a negative mindset. Imagine where you will be when you're ready. Dream often. And when you feel yourself getting pulled in the wrong direction emotionally, move your body. Physically, move it. Get out of your chair and imagine accomplishing great goals. Acknowledge your challenges, prioritize your needs, and engage in uplifting activities. Now is the time to accept where you are and set the goals. With your head down and an eye on the prize, take care of you. That is your one 
and only job now. A positive attitude always produces a positive outcome. You've got this, and I'm here to cheer you on. In this chapter, I've tried to impress upon you the importance of controlling your thoughts and setting boundaries that will create the space you need to relax and minimize your stress while working towards your goals. I'd like you to pick some short-term goals and name at least three steps you must take in order to achieve each one. These should be small, obtainable things, as in getting up out of your chair every hour and being on your feet for at least five minutes, or planning to include some greens at least once a day in your daily meal planning. What will you do when you're on your feet for 10 minutes? What are the vegetables that you could shop for? How are you going to prepare them? Are there any recipes you've been wanting to try? Having a plan is not only necessary, but calming. When you head out on a journey, maps are useful. Wouldn't you agree? I hope that a map is beginning to take hold in your mind. We don't all enjoy the same activities, so you must pick some things that you enjoy and create a plan so you can enjoy them. You may be tempted to resort to some old unhealthy self-soothing methods. When I heard Michael Phelps was smoking pot at one point in his career, I thought, what's a cigarette or two gonna hurt? The answer is plenty. In the recovery process, in order to ensure a fast track to recovery, you want to stay away from anything, anything that creates inflammation. That can be anything from stress, to substance abuse, to eating poorly, to toxic relationships. In the next chapter, we will dive into the powerful effects of nutrition.